book of Revelation that in end times we are in end times, ladies and gentlemen, whether you like it or not. The United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. So here's my message to the rulers of Iran. Your plan to destroy Israel will fail. It's difficult to uh, imagine just precisely how this thing will manifest itself. No one had expected that something like this would to Israeli forces in the northern part of the country are on high alert. They were expecting that Iran would retaliate after several of its soldiers were killed in those previous Israeli strikes. It's clear that just two days after Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the Iran nuclear deal, tensions in the Middle East have ratcheted up. Well, remember, Wolf, it's almost exactly 24 hours since this all started and escalated so rapidly, but such a sharp, stark juxtaposition between what we're seeing here behind me, this almost bizarre level of quiet, and what we saw last night. The Israeli military says it hit more than 50 Iranian targets within Syria. Intelligence sites, military bases, munitions facilities. By daylight, some Syrians were shrugging them off. We're not scared of any missiles, says this man. Israelis slept in their shelters, says another, while we stood on rooftops to watch our army's achievements. A spokesman appearing on television. With a very high level of readiness, our air forces destroyed a large amount of Israeli missiles, he said, not admitting to any major losses. But the target of the strikes, Iranian soldiers and advisors and Shia militias trained and financed by Tehran, can be spotted up and down Syria, sent in for years now to help the president, Bashar al-Assad, win the war. A couple of nights ago, Israel's military ordered that all of the bomb shelters in the Golan Heights, like this one here, be opened up so the public can come and use them. We will not tolerate a military presence with offensive capabilities that is in the hands of the extremist Quds Force uh, that is part of the Revolutionary Guard inside Syria with a tactical capability to menace and terrorize Israeli civilians. But while this escalation is concerning, neither Iran nor Israel right now appear to want an all-out war. So that may be true. Israel and Iran may not want all-out war. But that shadow war Derek was talking about, it's definitely out in the open now. And it's part of a pattern of violence that's trending sharply up. Why? Well, from Israel's perspective, it's being surrounded. In Lebanon, the Gaza Strip, and of course Syria, Iran's influence and threat potential keeps growing. Iran's most powerful proxy, Hezbollah, essentially runs southern Lebanon. And elections just this past weekend gave the group more influence over the country's politics. On Israel's southern flank, the militant group Hamas runs the Gaza Strip. That group's links to Iran have run hot and cold, but they have recently restored ties. And in Syria, Iran has gone all in. It's built militias, thousands of fighters strong, and propped up the Assad government with its own soldiers and weapons. That's a lot of hostile Iranian military assets right on Israel's border. And zooming out, Russia backs both Iran and Assad to support its interests in Syria, while behind Israel, there's the US. Donald Trump's cabinet is stacked with hawks, keen to put more pressure on Tehran. They'll negotiate or something will happen. Are the hardliners winning the day? 
Yeah, and, you know, I think uh, much of this rhetoric is an indication of how disappointed Iranians are in the Europeans. Many uh, Iranians, both moderate and hardliners, are disappointed um, that the uh, E3, the UK, Germany, the UK, uh, and France uh, didn't stand up to Mr. Trump. Israel will not permit any force on earth to threaten its future. And here's my message to all the countries represented here. Whatever resolutions you may adopt in this building, whatever decisions you may take in your capitals, Israel will do whatever it must do to defend our state and to defend our people. <laughs> Distinguished delegates, as this deal with Iran moves ahead, I hope you'll enforce it. How can I put this? with a little more rigor than you showed with the six Security Council resolutions that Iran has systematically violated and which now have been effectively discarded. Make sure that the inspectors actually inspect. Make sure that the snapback sanctions actually snap back and make sure that Iran's violations aren't swept under the Persian rug. Well, of one thing I can assure you, Israel will be watching closely. What the international community now needs to do is clear. First, make Iran comply with all its nuclear obligations. Keep Iran's feet to the fire. Second, check Iran's regional aggression. Support and strengthen those fighting Iran's aggression, beginning with Israel. Third, Use sanctions and all the tools available to you to tear down Iran's global terror network. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Israel is working closely with our Arab peace partners to address our common security challenges from Iran and also the security challenges from ISIS and from others. We're also working with other states in the Middle East, as well as countries in Africa, in Asia, and beyond. Many in our region know that both Iran and ISIS are our common enemies. And when your enemies fight each other, don't strengthen either one, weaken both. Common dangers are clearly bringing Israel and its Arab neighbors closer. And as we work together to thwart those dangers, I hope we'll build lasting partnerships, lasting partnerships for security, for prosperity, and for peace. But in Israel, we never forget one thing. We never forget that the most important partner that Israel has has always been and will always be the United States of America. The alliance between Israel and the United States is unshakable.